Take it away, Yanini. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am Yanini. Welcome to the Hitman 3 run. I have two wonderful co commentators with me who probably can introduce themselves. Yeah, yeah. guys, Frody7 here. Hey, and, Agent uh, Coates. Joined with Coatsy. Big fans of Yanini. You got this, buddy. Thank you, thank you. There was something amazing. So, I think uh, the rules of the category and the game are pretty well explained earlier in the interview. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop. Starting with Paris, the best map. It is still the best map, indeed. <laughs> so, Yanini starting at the auction. Yep. The start allows you to start right next to one of the targets, Dahlia, who's standing under that chandelier, well-placed chandelier. Oops. And, oh, I, nice. Immediate restart. <laughs> well done. Okay, you I fucked that up. Okay. Ah. Also interesting to note that the timer doesn't start until the cutscene is over. So Janini is waiting in the cutscene here for Dahlia to be in... Uh, Further up ahead, or route, so you can kill her straight away. Yeah, of course, it doesn't matter too much, like in the uh, in a marathon setting where we just measure after real time. But That's normally true. in Hitman, we speedrun after in game time, so there it really matters. And yeah. yes, as you can see on the bottom left, we have green guns still. That's a very good sign because those indicate that I still have my assassin rating, which we, which we need. Yeah, the, the duck that he threw was explosive and it drops the chandelier which is an accident kill, which does not count against your silent assassin rating, even if the body is found in public. Meanwhile, a quick little maneuver there from Yanini, making the guard sick so he could trigger, uh, grab the fireworks remote and set up for the Victor kill here. Exactly. Uh, Victor, there, there he is. You can see he's a bit angry that the fireworks gone off early. So, he's uh, gonna walk outside and we're gonna prepare a nice little explosion for him. Yeah, so Janini is gonna throw the propane here, making it leak, and then oh, place oh. a proximity taser right here. Uh, as soon as Victor will walk through that door, it will activate the taser, which will set off the propane and will result in an excellent kill in right about... Now, I should say. Yep. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and there we go, first level done. One, two, Only 19 three. to go. <laughs> Very nice. I think this map is regarded as the, uh, the community favorite. Every time there's a poll or a vote, Bepians is always at the top. I mean, it's arguably the second best map. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Crow is a is, is a very known <laughs> Paris lover and Legacy Chaos, map uh, lover. <laughs> and that as well. I mean, I do love them as well. They are amazing, but most maps are amazing. So. Ooh, Ooh. I wasn't. Uh, that was unlucky timing, and I wasn't fast enough. Yeah, if they panic too quickly, those guards will be alerted and. They turn around too fast. Exactly, but that's an important mechanic. Like, uh, I shot the wall, so the, the NPCs uh, went into panic mode. And then they don't spot me trespassing. Like, normally, like, the, the right dot over the head indicates that they are in forces and will, would wrap me out for trespassing. And it's like, but uh, they don't care when they're hearing gunshots. Yeah. Yeah, only works to regular NPCs though. The guards will still spot you with yep. the double panic shot. So he just shot that, that panel, and uh, that breaks the like panel in the observatory. So one of the targets is now uh, alerted to that. So he's going to start running over to the observatory, and he will deal with him later. Thought. Exactly. And for the other target, for Cesca DeSantis, we're going to again use a propane. Uh, don't worry, we're not gonna do that that often, but it's for those first two levels, it's really convenient. Oh. 
fucking store. I mean, nothing wrong with a good remote trap kill, right, in Hitman? I'm yeah, always a fan true. of those. Sure. So, timing is pretty well. There he comes. Yeah. I'm gonna wait until those guards pass. He's yeah. standing under this thingy, and there we go. It wasn't normally like there, that they die pretty close to each other, which is. Sometimes they just die at the exact same second. It always feels great, like double kill. Yeah, and then Diana doesn't know how to handle it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True, she doesn't. She gets confused. Uh, and here we see Janini making use of the EMP to take out the virus, which is arguably the safest way to do it. Or a combination of safe and fast. And I missed it. Perfect. <laughs> Black type. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, not dead. Oh my god, um, improvisation, let's go. <laughs> Holy shit. I think I've, like, I did like 100, 200 CP in the runs and I've never missed the virus. Holy shit. Like the EMP show. Oh. I think I'm okay, just normally... too, too good at jinxing you, uh, Yanini. <laughs> yeah. I dropped my weapon. I don't have my weapon anymore. Okay, a big improvisation time, let's go. Uh, I think it's still... <laughs> hey, over there. I think I can retrieve it. Yeah, it should be over here. And, ah, there's a camera though. Oh, now I got spotted by camera. Oh, okay. Holy shit. Ah, I'm so bad at this. It's amazing. It's okay, it's okay, man. Keep going. Yeah, I will. I wasn't counting on so many restarts so early, but I guess we'll take it. Confused now. I'm sorry. Uh, it was again red guns. Uh, this is not going up. Going. Going all. Not going. <laughs> not going well. Nah, you got this, man. Just keep going. Oh. Uh, well. It's so crazy, you know. Done this a thousand times and. Yeah, but that's the of thing course. about, about Hitman no, speedruns, right? Like, they're never mm -hmm. consistent. You can do something a thousand yeah. times, and then the try after that, it just fails. Uh, that's, of course, true. And, like, half of the time, it's out of your control. So... What can you do then? Uh, that's true. Oh, real steep. Um, So we're going to just try, this, try it all again. So I'll be extra careful, and then we can maybe move on a bit quicker. Because we still have a lot to, lot to go. There he comes. Like the panel just, he comes here anyway, uh, but the panel just brings him here faster. Uh, like he drops his goal thing, and yeah, this comes I don't. To you I don't think he stands under the solar system if you don't shoot the panel either. I think he goes to the. That is top. true. That, that is true. The timing is extremely tight if you yeah. If you just yeah, you can still own. hit him, but own. yeah. Wait, my guns are red again. What's happening? Did you get an on-target with Franny? No, I, I guess I did. <sighs> okay, if I fail this again, I'll just keep going. I'll just. Ignore it, but uh, this is very unusual. Uh, what am I doing wrong, guys? <laughs> Help me out here. I think the pro ch toss the propane a little more to the left because when you toss it yeah, closer I'll to the try. center, I ripped in our the, the race with that. Oh yeah, I'll try. Hmm. I've never had a problem with it though. I mean, some, sometimes there's like also RNG in how far apart the guard is away from the target, right? Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, that is true. But also, the game can be hugely inconsistent, that, that is true, like... E even even more than we already told, like, you, you can do things a thousand times, and then you try it again, like, you, on another day, you, you start the game, you try it, you try it, and it just won't work anymore, like, never. Yeah. Something just changed from, like, even when you restart the game, it just, something's changed that makes things work or not work. I, I've never figured out or have an idea why that is, but 
I mean, to be fair, it's that, like a really like engine-wise, programming-wise, it's a really complicated game. Yeah. Like there are so many, mm. so many factors to it. A lot of moving parts. Which, yeah, which the game has to calculate each time, so it does make sense. Yeah, that's why the, the most activity in this game is for individual levels rather than full game. Like, there are people who do full game, but it's like minuscule compared to the individual level competition. Because, because of the, the randomness and the... Nobody really wants to, <laughs> wants to do a 30 minute run and then have it rip at the end. Yeah. I mean, that's why people also go for the s slightly slower but more consistent uh, strats yeah. in trilogy runs. Yeah. Absolutely. That is true. And I like also, you can do just, just so much more cool stuff in 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 like in IL runs because yeah. you don't have to look out for consistency so much. You can grind an hour, multiple hours for for a run, and it's always uh, yeah. That's, that's how it's supposed to good. work. There we go. Yes, EMP destroys the lap. Yeah, left top and just destroys the virus. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, move on. It's all right. On to Marrakesh. <laughs> And now at the start, we're going to see one of the more broken tricks in uh, Hitman Speed Running, in Hitman 3. Absolutely. Which is uh, the body shot. Maybe Oates wants to tell something more uh, about that, explain it a bit further. Yeah, so when you body shot guards, um, it creates a small little radius around your character. And if you can escape that radius before any of the guards see you, they will be completely blind to you. And they won't know that you're trespassing and they won't know that it was you that shot them. Um, if you stay within that radius, they will. you will go into combat and you will lose Silent Assassin. But as long as you escape that radius before they've actually seen you, uh, you can run past them and do quite a few things without uh, losing your Silent Assassin. Very useful. And it looks, and it looks absolutely silly, as we just yeah. saw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I... Uh, okay. Um, I guess I missed it up. Uh, like, it's a similar mechanic that I, that I used afterwards. On, on, on that wall there. Uh, I shot that wall so the guard in, in the office of a first target, Klaus Strandberg, comes running outside because uh, when you body shot or like triple shot next to, an, to a guard, he will come running to your location from where, where you shot from. And we, we use that here. But apparently uh, I, I made a sh <laughs> I made not enough shots because he didn't investigate film. Like one, two, three there. He gets exclamation mark. If he doesn't get the exclamation mark, it doesn't work. And then we can just shoot a guy up there and leave him in his office. Yeah, so that, that cop will be converging on where he just shot from and he'll be exiting the mission before he has time to go back up and see the dead body. Yeah, No one else goes back. in there. You see, we'll be back at around 2.30, which is more than enough time for you need to finish here. But yeah, the Hopefully. triple shot mechanic and the body shot mechanic are very, very similar. Man, I thought I heard something. Check and they're out. both very broken and powerful uh, tricks for Hitman speedrunners. Yeah. It's like the body shot messes with uh, the view cones a little bit, makes them kind of overpowered, whereas the three shot tend to not do that as well. Yeah, that's true. New item. Yep. Very, very cool item. It's a basically a proxy sedative, so... Anybody who comes within the radius of that sedative will be knocked out, but it doesn't count against your silent assassin if the body is spotted, unless it's a target that has been knocked out. Yeah, Very useful and the, item. The, the, and the radius is absolutely insane. Yeah. And also it has a, a sound load to, uh, attached to it as well, which is also insanely large. So it's, yep. like, it's like an insanely great tool. Yeah, several items yeah. in one. And it works as a thrown melee as well, so you can throw it at people and knock them. Yeah. Very clean run there, uh, Bellinini, 150. Thank you. And yeah, the, like the, the mechanic of excellent KOs, um, it was also what I, what I used with the dart gun. And here again, it, it will be used a lot of times in the run. Yeah. Uh, because it's very useful. Yeah, taking out enforcers and things along the way to make sure that they don't spot anything is very nice and not having a silent assassin is very useful. Exactly. Makes things a lot easier. For example, here I can just take out this this dart gun, and this guy doesn't spot me trespassing because uh, he saw his buddy getting accident accidentally KO'd. Yeah, and that side effect of the calmer is arguably just as strong as uh, the calmer shot itself. Yeah, you could yeah. argue that for sure. But this is a very cool kill. 
uh, you see the, the guy Jordan Cross is up there in his, in his recording booth and uh, the baseball just creates an expl the explosive baseball creates an explosion below him and wall bangs him through the through the ceiling yeah yeah he doesn't get found for quite a while long uh, long enough for uh, Yanini here to escape the mission however yeah, exactly. second part, if he were to be found, though, it would count against Silent Assassin because it's not an accident kill. It was an explosion kill, so it wouldn't, uh... Um, and and then he I shot guess the chandelier there <laughs> slightly too early. Ken was not in position there. Yep. Yeah, those chandeliers are uh, kind of jank sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, yeah. That shouldn't happen either, though. But yeah, big shout out to Big Dave there, who is the one who found that uh, that baseball kill for Jordan through the ceiling. And everyone has been using it since. Yep. It's just uh, so good. A shout I out think to it, it works from the other uh, the other room as well too, right? It's a little harder. Target down. Next up. Uh, I've never tried that. I'm not sure. I think it works from the other side as well, but it's a harder shot. It's like a very, very, very like precise shot mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. E and yeah, even this, this one is already, is he quite precise already? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and perfect okay, so timing here for uh, Janini. As you can see, Ken is just walking up to the kitchen, right under a lamp here. For a falling object, excellent kill. Oh. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure timing-wise that he should, should have died on the first try as well, but I guess not. Uh, if you get the compromise glitch, just enough. go for it. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, there, there is a glitch, like, I, I tranked the guy on the rooftop, right? Yeah. And, like, very rarely, like, I would say one in a, one in 50 or something, um, they wake up even, and, like, compromise me, even though I've, they've never seen me. Yeah. Which is a very weird glitch, but it happens sometimes. It happened to me in the race. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It it's always happens glitch. at the worst times. But yeah, that's also an example of like, you can't always solely rely on the in-game timer for timings. Because as we said, Hitman is inconsistent. When loading in a level, like there is randomness of a few seconds, like how far along a target is in its route. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. I'm messing up a bit, but it should be fine. So okay, we are oh. trying to get the timing for Sean here. Yeah, so Yanini's going to create an yes, explosion oh, bar, which will cause an we Wait a bit until the, kill. the guard will walk away. Now he's going to shoot a second time, and then the car explodes, and that's also an accident kill. That's very nice how you wait there and remove the RNG factor of the guard dying as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, that guard is very RNG. Sometimes he walks, like, inside of the target. Sometimes he walks meters away. Uh, but, yeah, if you wait there a bit after the first shot, then... You will always go to the same position, and you can safely kill, kill Sean. Yeah. This is a lethal syringe I just grabbed here, which means it's lethal poison. Uh, I'll, I'll just jab her with it. And she will get found, but it doesn't matter because it's lethal poison. Yeah. And that was works. really close, by the way. I, I wasn't Ooh. careful enough. <laughs> yeah, that was just a big whoosh. Yeah. yeah, but that's uh, three down already in one minute. Only uh, one last target to go. And yeah, now I'd say if you rate. ask the majority of the Hitman players, like the whole player base in general, like most would say like Colorado is like one of the hardest maps. Oh, for sure. Yanini yeah, here uh, is uh, proving otherwise. <laughs> yeah. It can be quite easy, uh, depending on, like, if, you, if you know it well. It's, it's, it's a surely, like it's, it's seen as one of the hardest maps because it's so, so it's quite small and, and especially you're trespassing like on all other maps pretty much, you have uh, some area where you're not trespassing, but here you're hostile everywhere. So, yeah, yeah. which make, can make it quite hard to play Not to mention, carefully. everyone is a guard on this map. <laughs> yes, everyone. So if, if you get in a shootout, you're like pretty much dead instantly. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Finishing Maya there by shooting the hay bale. Nice uh, falling object, excellent kill. Yes. And uh, we're on to the last map of the legacy part, which is yeah. one out of three. Yep. Hokkaido. And Yanini's taking advantage of the restaurant starting point, which is a secondary suit location as opposed to the default start. But this one causes one of the targets to stay on the cable car landing longer than if you were to start somewhere else so that he can manipulate the NPCs a little better, give them a little more. Yes. Yep. 
And here we see another explosion through, uh, through a window, which will kill Sodas. Sodas down. Uh, Sodas is a, is a unique case in that he's not really a real NPC. That's for another and like, no matter how you kill him, you will always keep your green, uh, green guns. Granted that no one saw you doing something illegal, of course. But like, his body getting found, his body can't get found in no. that regard. Good evening. And any amount of damage will kill him. Yep. So you need to drop a briefcase here. And Yuki is, has seen the briefcase, and he's waiting for both of her guards to be KO'd, and he shoots her in the head once they are fully knocked out, because the NPCs can still spot illegal things while they're in the animation of falling over. But once you get that little spinning buffering symbol above their head, that means they're fully KO'd, and you're safe to, to do stuff in front of them. Yeah. Exactly, and now we're on to Season 2. That was a very clean run, uh, 50 very seconds. Nice. Yeah, it's going much better now. And this one is a is like a bit of a tutorial level in the in Hitman Two in the season two. So we're just gonna we have to do this. Now the target arrives. We'll just call all those two guys. And there occurs a lethal syringe. I gotta be careful for this guy. And we're out. So now we just like have to run. One minute to an exit, so if you have any donations, then now's the time. Fantastic. I was actually just about to ask. Uh, Mark okay. Garcia donates $100 with a comment, Thanks, as always, to the staff and the speedrunners for putting on an amazing show. We have a newborn at home, and SGDQ is helping me stay entertained during those sleepless nights. Uh, stoked for all the runs left in this incredible event. This donation goes towards no one left behind in the Mass Effect 2 run. Hmm. No way to get past them go ahead and read another one. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Mr. Shadow Ant donates $25, saying, Donating some more to the no one left behind incentive for the Mass Effect 2 run. Come on, folks. These are neither frames nor animals. They're Shepard's trusted crewmates. Let's get them out of the collector base safe. Awesome. Um, so yeah, what you, what you saw there, uh, I, I placed the duck there at the truck. It was, there were like, explosives on the truck, I think oil, motor oil, and it exploded. So the guards that guarded my boat uh, ran away so I could, could use the exit. And I went to Miami. Which is also a really great map. One yes. of the best maps of uh, Hitman 2, I would For argue. Sure. For sure, yeah. And we see a dolphin start uh, here, the dolphin start area suit location from Yunini. Taking the sniper with him. Yeah, a sniper is a really important item in a lot of these because not only is it a silent, uh, a silenced weapon, and it's long range, so it's very precise, but it also can open doors because it's a big weapon and it only takes one shot. Yep, and especially here it's important to... Yeah, the, the shot on the Sierra there is kind of tight, so... I definitely want a sniper because with a sniper you can slow down time. Yes. And that is really, really helpful. Yeah, very clean when shot you have there tight as well. Shots. <laughs> Your simulation is set the best. And now, because we shot this laptop, our other target, Robert Knox, will go investigate. So we're gonna slap his bodyguard with the, the fish. And now take his helicopter as exit. Head for an exit and we'll speak again soon. You make it look so easy, you need. <laughs> that's good, that's my job. <laughs> Very clean run. Now and we're now we're on Santa Fortuna. <laughs> Santa Fortuna <laughs> with the worst target in the game, arguably, Jorge Franco. I don't think arguably, I think that's just a fact. <laughs> Yeah, he is I think the worst. every single Hitman speedrunner agrees on the fact that Jorge is uh, incredibly difficult to deal with due to his RNG. Yep. See, the thing with Jorge is he has this coughing animation and he has this reading on his iPad animation, and it's random how often and for how long it happens during a run, and it can it can make a huge difference, especially yeah. in the longer runs. You can it can make a minute difference, really. Yeah, it's forced improv. I mean, if you're doing an individual level run, of course, you can just restart and run it again. But if you're doing a full game, you have to improv if you want to save the run most of the time. Unless he's on pace, which is 
that's a, a small window sometimes. Yeah. We'll deal with him when we get there. And uh, for now, we'll use another mechanic it's called the peekaboo. Um, to lure oh, one of our targets outside. Because she spotted me trespassing. Um, she will go, go where I was and investigate. And I left a little present for her there. Which I will now detonate. And that did not work. I'm sorry. I guess it detonated. Too early. Uh, go on. G g explain more. I I'll just restart. Yeah, so he placed a briefcase with a breaching charge inside. And then he peekabooed her like he explained. He goes outside. If he detonates at the right time, the uh, breaching charge will kill her. And no one will hear and no one will see. And nobody else walks out on that balcony. So he's allowed to just leave her there. For the rest of the run. Exactly. Yeah. Also good to note that the peekaboo only works uh, when you're in a trespassing disguise, in the trespassing area. It won't work if you're just dressed as a, as a soldier, for example, here, and like aim a gun at the window, she won't care. Or she won't come, at least. Yep. Only, we'll only get compromised if <laughs> they for too long. Um, but yeah, I was very confused because normally that's exactly the timing that I want. I always detonated there, never had problems with it, but yeah. Okay, now, now it worked. Now I use the same timing and it worked. I, I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, that's, I'm not gonna uh, think about it. Sometimes yep, just, that's just don't want to know. That's hashtag just hitman things. Um, it seems to also be, it, it seems to be worse on the larger maps as well, with multiple targets. Like yeah. the timing gets even more inconsistent. Yeah. Somebody... So I'm personally always a fan of uh, using instinct in those cases and like actually spend like one yeah. second watching the target just to make sure like in these trilogy runs. Yeah, exactly. So mm. now we're entering this mansion and uh, I, I, I am also like, I don't like Santa Fortuna that much. I, I think it's my least favorite map um, because it has this, this mansion in the middle where you're which is, it just has this big mansion in the middle. You can't really get around easily, and yeah, it kind of feels bad. But yeah, yeah we will just gonna run through here a bit, and it it kind of works. Uh, you so basically make these guys. Go yeah, a, go ahead. You go to a, a hostile area, which is basically going to another version of Colorado at this point. No faster way through the map other than through this hostile area, so. Now we use the again. Gonna this got us to turn around. So that we can freely Oh no way. <gasps> oh my god. I've Why never had that happen either. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I I think that should still work, but this guy is gonna occupy this toilet. This is a good good call for timing, actually. Oh, I have just to don't miss here. Hello. Perfect. Uh, now to hit this seeker. This is not an easy seeker shot. This is a very hard one. Uh, have we explained what the seeker does for those of... Uh, I don't think we did, we did no. What is that? Uh, well, go ahead, uh, OT. Yeah, so Luckily, the yeah. seeker darts, they, when they land, they make the target sick and the target will navigate to the nearest throw-up spot, which is typically a bathroom or a bin of some sort. <laughs> So they, uh, this is a good way to manipulate your targets to get them in a spot where they might be isolated from their personal bodyguards or other NPCs. Really kill them, and you can do it uh, effectively with remote, remote traps and stuff like that. Exactly. Um, as you saw there, like Jorge, like often he 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 comes there, and it's very easy to land a shot. Here it was was kind of hard because he was just. Walking away, and the time was kind of unfortunate, and I and I missed the shot as well, so that was pretty bad. I was also pretty bad. I have to refocus because right now I'm just doing uh, terribly. Yeah, Jorge's never where you want him to be when you get there. Yeah, that is true. The majority of uh, full game runs in Hitman are trying to manage the. The RNG in the in the randomness that you encounter, trying to make it manageable so that you can actually progress through with as little restarts as possible. Whereas in individual level, you could restart a thousand times and you might get the world record because you managed to get that one that one god level RNG. 
So unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's, it's way worse as well to, to restart on, on, on levels that are long, as long as this. I was already, I think, two minutes, two and a half minutes into the, into the level. So yeah, yeah. that, that always kind of sucks. Yeah. Yep. And, but, but it's okay. So let's, let's check again. Martinez there we go. Good work. Yeah, the breach, I think, is uh, it's, it's the only silent explosive in the game. So it is. It I, is, I don't yeah. think I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is. And that means that like people just won't hear it. If they're, if they're not really close by, they won't hear and they are dying. So yeah, with, with every other explosive, mm, there is this two door rule, which means uh, normally if you want an explosive not to be heard by an NPC, there have to be two doors between them. Close doors, two closed yeah. doors. Two closed doors. And that, that can be a bit different uh, if, if there's a very long distance between them. Like, it can also be one door and a very long distance. That also works. Or just, like, a very, very long distance. And no doors. That's what also works. But generally speaking, two doors is a, is a rule of thumb. Yeah, it's interesting how sound works. Yeah, it's always uh, it's always kind of unpredictable. There's new soundproof spots found uh, specifically for roulette often where we're trying to figure out how do we get a loud kill here because we might run into that playing roulette uh, requirement to mission. Yeah, so basically the Hitman maps are built up in cells and it's like based on the amount of cells that sound can travel through. Just very interesting uh, programming wise. Rico nice go. kill there on Rico. <laughs> yeah, this time I didn't, I didn't screw it up. Which is very nice. So now Jorge is just coming out of his, out of his hut. I might even try now. Nah, won't catch him here. Nah, he already left. It's okay. Guy occupant. Okay, so perfect. Perfect. I'll just wait for the scout. And then while he is investigating whatever. I can shoot him with the seeker. And that's also important because normally he would go to this toilet. But this guard is puking there already, which means he will go to another toilet. Yes. Which is exactly what we want. Yes, the other toilet is not only nearer to the exit that he's going to be taking, so it's more convenient, but also his guards stop in such a position at this toilet that Yanini will be able to freely shoot him upon the exit. Exactly. Without and he's also, in a, he's also in a high bush, which means. Like, the body won't get seen. Uh, like, you can stand in the high bushes, NPCs can as well, um, yeah. with, without getting seen doing anything. Very nice That's how it's there. supposed to go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And also, interesting to add is, like, those guards are, like, escorting guards. Like, you got different types of guards. And, like, as soon as Jorge is dead, they will just stop caring and just turn around. And you got yes. multiple of those guards throughout the game. Uh, Mendoza comes to mind. Uh, Dubai as well. There's lots of examples. Paris. It's actually, yeah. it's actually pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, but all, all, every VIP guards like they all behave a bit different. It's it's uh, interesting to play around with. Yeah. Anyway, now we're on to Mumbai. It's another. It, it's a huge map. It's a, <laughs> uh, I, I would even say it's too huge. Uh, there's a lot of shortcuts and stuff you can do here, and especially uh, there is a target called the Maelstrom. Uh, who you normally have to identify uh, and, and then, then kill because you don't know, it's always randomized the, um, the look of him I would pay a lot of rupee. but of course we wouldn't be speedrunners if we wouldn't have found a way around it because the, like, his route is dependent on where you start and we start a skywalk which means he will walk through the puddle uh, which I just prepared with a, with a micro taser and there he did because he got electrified yeah. yeah, I think that's a really interesting mechanic for this map, that his starting Ooh, location is based on your starting location. Well yep. It's quite unique in and that uh, regard. However, I one. forgot the car battery. That is not good. So good. It should work out timing-wise. Yeah, I think it should work out. Okay, now I'll just prepare. I, I threw the brick in the in the thingy, in the oven, I guess. And uh, which, which means that both targets are now on their way, uh, because they, they think the other one arranged a meeting, uh, so we'll prepare some kills on the way. And yeah, you have to have time for some more donations. Absolutely, I would love to. Uh, PJ donates $50, saying, Donating to see a perfect run on the final mission of Mass Effect 2. 
cannot even remember how many times I had to play through to keep everyone in one piece. Me too. Rest in peace. Um, Slade Bane donates $100. Have to donate for Mass Effect 2, my favorite game of all time. And since it's my fave, gotta put this towards No Man Left Behind and get as much ME2 as possible. I wholeheartedly agree. And right now, folks, we are just under $12,000 left to go. 11,006 is what I'm seeing right now. So let's get those donations in and get us more Mass Effect. Just one target left. Let's bring this one home. I'm not sure it's gonna work. It's not gonna work. Oh, it's not gonna work. I was too late. I tried to improvise a bit, I was too late. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, wow. That was a very stupid fi uh, Yeah. Very stupid way to fail this. But it's okay, we'll do it again. Kind of interesting. The... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm convinced all the Mr. Mike, uh, all the Mass Effect donations are Mr. Mike guys. <laughs> ah, yes. It's interesting that uh, there's three remote kills uh, set up here from Yanini for Mumbai. For all will target. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this uh, is the yeah. one I was running as well, I think, in the race that I was running. Yeah. It's kind of the most, like, it's still fairly fast while um, uh, while being very safe. Get this. And uh, there, is a, like, there are some threats, especially the World Record threat, which, which can be quite consistent. It's like a, it's like a 1 minute 10. Mm, we, we sniped downward from his tower and stuff. It's it's definitely possible to do it in a full game run, but I was not feeling that comfortable with it. And, and like, I think it's really important to always choose strats that you're comfortable with, with running, um, even if it's like it's also a bit of time loss or something. Because that, that, yeah, you don't definitely have more chance of su success then. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So here it's you need to a car battery in a, in a puddle for uh, Vanya Shah who will walk in there and get electrocuted for the second kill. So that's two electrocution kills. And we will see a propane set up with the, with the proxy taser again, yeah. just like in Paris and Sapienza. So very cool setups here uh, done by Yanini. Cool. And now his yeah. timing is a bit better as well, so he doesn't have to improvise here, because this time he did pick up the battery straight away. Leaves him a lot uh, enough time, so no one hears the throw of the propane like last time, and that wood should just die as soon as he comes close here. Exactly. So now can Rosebush can pre oh there she dies and he should die soon as well. Comes down the stairs and boop, and will exit by. That's why we smuggled the coins by by, by paying this this tuk tuk driver. To point and we're out. That's taxi, actually taxi, also taxi. a really cool mechanic about Mumbai, like the taxi exits, yeah. where you need to pay them True. with coins. I really like yeah, it. Yeah, there are a lot Mumbai. of them. Yeah. All the map. I think maybe one of the mechanics and that's important to talk about, which is uh, like on the first Mumbai run, is when you are near a target and they have their bodyguards with them, they have what's called VIP behavior. So if you were to like toss a coin or something, the the target will exhibit what's called VIP behavior and they will have a guard uh, go look for it instead of them. And there are ways around this, of course, but if you are, uh, uh, you know, in an improv situation. Hey, did you drop off the surveillance tapes on Janus at the house? Thank Cassidy you. was asking for this. So, yeah, there is Janus, our first target, and there's an oxygen tank, which we're gonna shoot two times. And he's gonna die from that. A very Feels nice like kill there. Like still. And still, <laughs> yes. Close now. Yeah, Will and Creek is kind of it's kind of a meme meme map because um, the optional obje there, are, there are like three optional objects. Like you have to find clues, and we have to find three of them. And there's a lot of dialogue uh, connected with them, which just means that the handler will just never stop talking. So you will hear this, and you have to 
pick up the clues every time you run the mission. So we hear those dialogues over and over and over again. Um, I'm, like, I'm fairly confident that every Hitman speedrunner knows all the lines of Wilton Creek. I'm oh, fairly yeah. confident. Yep. <laughs> for sure. So we're gonna if I can the step in for game. just a second. Yes, uh, of course, go ahead. A, got a donation here that I really want to read. Uh, Anonymous donates $250 and says, Glad to see you, Nini, keeping a level head despite the chaos of this run. Good luck for the rest of this Hitman run. Incentive for runner's choice. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you so much. But yeah, that's that done. And we're nearing the end of season two. And this is like actually the, the last map, the last regular map of, of season two. There are two DLC missions after that though. So season two is not, uh, yes. Not, not quite the last map. Ah, we're, pa we're past the halfway point though. 11 maps down. That is true. And that nine to go. True. I really like Isle of Scale. I really like this map. Yeah, I just feel it's, it's, it's a huge castle uh, and it's, it's a really cool map, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Hitman 2 I really maps didn't, are hard to learn. I okay. really didn't like it at first. It took yeah. me quite a while to uh, to appreciate the map and the layout. Yeah, yeah some maps are like, are like that. Like the, the more you know about it, the more you the more you like it. I think it was the same case for me in, in Berlin. Like I, I didn't like it at first, in my first playthrough, but every Every playthrough, I liked it more. Yeah, for same thing with me on Berlin, and I think that one of the big things that helps on those maps is contracts. If you get good contracts, you you sort of like oh, yeah. are forced to explore parts of the map that you didn't that know, and it makes it cut. way more familiar. But still, nobody. Uh, exactly. So we have uh, the two Washington twins, which are we're gonna take care of. This she doesn't quite send on the channel here. We have to wait a bit. One, two, three steps, and there she goes. Now we're gonna call the call the wake here, which makes our other target move. And we're gonna take like make use of the the calm mechanic again. So all the NPCs here don't care about us trespassing. Such a powerful technique. Or yeah. Side effect from the calmer. It's very nice because uh, the majority of this map, when you're in your suit, you're trespassing. Yep. Be able to nullify that is super powerful first. Yeah, especially because it also works on God. Yeah. And there nice. we go. Another um, propane setup kill there for Zoe. True. Ah, you should have waited one second there for 147. <laughs> True. Uh, 420 is screaming. Basic somewhere. speedrunner rule I, I violated here. Normally, if, if, you, if you're close to 47 seconds, in any way, you have to wait for the 47 seconds. But I apparently uh, I violated the rule because I didn't see. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and now onto the bank. Also, a really, really great map. Sure. So, uh, this is a bit unique because only have one target. But it has an additional objective of either breaking into the vault and stealing the data core, or additionally, what I'm doing, uh, picking up the backup data disk from the from our, from one, from our target and the two, I think, the head of finance and head of personnel or something like that. It's Fabian Mann and Matteo Perez. And exactly, we gotta pick up all three data disks. So we got we got the first one. And we also saw Janini no. there uh, making use of like. Uh, "Quote unquote," a broken frisk point there, where you could oh, just yeah, run true. through by sticking to the right, and the guard doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't pay attention to him. Quite yeah. funny. Trespassing yeah. zone was cut a bit okay. short, so uh, you're good. able to run right through it. Anyway, so just just yeah, just have to stick to the right, and it's uh, you can very easily run through it. So this is our second, our second guy with the data disk. Maybe a man. There we go. Now it's just a target left, which is sitting in this huge office. So we're gonna break in there now. And oh, I, oh my god, I, my nerves are really messing with me. I forgot, I forgot the smuggle point. Um, should we improvise? Let's improvise. 
Yeah, yeah. shoot the, the camera, maybe do the grammar for yeah, 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 I'll, I'll improvise. Okay. Yeah, we can do this. I mean, sometimes improvs in Hitman are even more uh, interesting yeah, to watch. Yep. That is uh, very true. Um, how do we do this? Just gonna pop my head in to say that yes. we are just past halfway to that no one left behind incentive. We're just over Ooh. 10K. That means we've got a little, little under 10K left to go. I know we can do it, chat. Let's get this done. Let's go. No incentive left behind. Go ahead and donate for that. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, again, my nerves are probably playing with me or something. Um, gonna, You're doing uh, great, man. No worries. Do this again. And it's pretty much, we're gonna do this. Okay. That's interesting. We're gonna do the same thing again. Uh, what, what happened is, like, you can bring a weapon and two, two items, as you, as you saw. You can also smuggle an item, which, and I, and I forgot that in my loadout, because for some reason, the, your loadout is safe, because, like, I don't really change that much. Uh, as you can see, I, I, like, the weapon is saved, the two items are saved, but the smuggle points are not saved. So you're always, and the stunner locations are not, aren't either. So you always have to change those before you, uh, before you start the level, which is kind of irritating. And normally I don't forget it. I did now. I'm, I'm sorry about it, but it should be fine. Also, I think this is the first time where we're seeing the yellow camera uh, right next to the minimap. Which oh, yes. means uh, Janini got recorded by a camera, but he will, can still uh, go back to green if he uh, gets rid of the evidence, which he will do later on. I think the addition of the Silent Assassin Tracker is uh, one of the best additions in Hitman 2. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. Very good to know uh, <laughs> if you're good to go or not. Definitely save some time. So let's, let's do all this stuff again. Yeah, it will take a while. We're gonna you can pass cameras. The cameras all can also record me a bit trespassing, it's not a problem. As long as the, the suspicion meter doesn't fill up all the way. And now we have this briefcase here. From the, which I'm gonna take my coma out. And then we're gonna... We gotta be a bit careful here. Shoot this camera. And then we're gonna... Could you see what that sound? That coma. There we go. Uh, yes, she has three guards here. Now they're all knocked out. And there she goes. That's the last disc. Yeah, having a coma there this... makes such a huge difference to clear out the room. And in there was also the evidence box, which I just shot, uh, which means I'm back to green. And uh, but, like, like, but I also picked up the uh, exit key card. So, like this exit, which I'm gonna use, you can only use uh, if you have this key card. So yeah, it's definitely the fastest way. All the other exits are way down below. Yeah, and one of the one of the cool things to point out there was that when she saw all of her guards dropping, her none of her guards saw any anything illegal or uh, that would count against SA. And but she, when she sees all of her guards dropping, she goes into target lockdown, which will cause her to scream. But because all the doors are closed, no one outside of the room will hear, and so he's able to just shoot her where she stands and have nobody uh, alerted coming in or anything like that. Yep. And now, now we're on to Haven Island. Coach's uh, favorite map. map. It's a lot of problems. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a beautiful map. Unfortunately, it's terribly broken. Uh, NPCs have huge view cones. And you can, like, a lot of walls on this map aren't actually walls because you can just see through them. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's, 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 it's a terribly, terribly broken. Yeah. A uh, very, uh, very time-consuming map, especially if you're in a, a race with other people. Huh? Yep. Um, oh, by the way, uh, on that kill, I used uh, another technique, which is, well, like, I, I took my gun out, and his bodyguard saw it, uh, the bodyguard of, of our target Stephen Bradley, and he went into in panic mode, and that's why he, like, normally, of course, he would rat me out for, for stabbing, or, like, would go into combat because I stepped, uh, stepped my target with a syringe 
but he didn't care because he was in a like the VIP lockdown, like VIP guard exclusive panic mode. So yeah, that was used here. Sort of like a, a weird sort of soft lockdown where the guard becomes blind for a couple of seconds. So Yanini is able to inject the target with poison without that being seen as the illegal action, which it is. Action to poke people, Man. but when he's blind like that, he's away with it. So, oh, hello. Can you die, please? Okay, it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Sometimes the, the like the, the wind is it's a window now because you so you can shoot through it, but sometimes it uh, doesn't work properly. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. they're all all down. Uh, it's, it's best best to not enter the villa because the, the villa is the is the um, the worst part of the wall hex. So. Just gonna do it like that. And that was season two. On to season three. Ew. Oh, very clean run there, though. No restarts. Two minutes. Very well done there. Cool. So. But yeah, six to go. On to Dubai. Yep, this is the Hitman 3 main missions. So if you were to buy oh. Hitman 3, these are the missions you would be seeing. Exactly. The other ones are from the previous game, so you need to of course, ha either have those games or have the expanded pass. Or like the, the legacy passes. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is the first Hitman 3 map. And I'm gonna just shoot our target in the face. Let's check one of his guards. There are three guards in this room. We're gonna, two of them we're gonna call them. This guy we're gonna knock out, and then we can. Oh, I don't want to take a photo of him. I want to shoot him in the head. Thank you. And then we can exit this, this elevator. I mean, here. style points are important as well, right? You can take a picture <laughs> yeah. in between. <laughs> that is undeniably true. But this yeah, shows I how fast you are that you got time for that. <laughs> so on that last one, there is a part of that first guy that he shot. There is a part of one of his bodyguard cycles where he will spot the body, but he took advantage of the guard turning away before he took the shot, and then he took an extra distraction shot to hold that bodyguard in place so that he wouldn't turn around before Yanini exited so that he could get, get away with leaving a body out in the open like that. Exactly. Yeah, and the exit and is right there. Very convenient. Yeah, now onto Very Dartmoor, convenient. which is another map with an, uh, a side objective and only one target, just like the bank. Also, two ways to do it. You either have to grab the case file all the way up in her office, or you grab the two tokens to the to the bank in London. I want to say. Madam Carlyle, yeah, yeah. Yes. Anyway, like that. two ways to complete that side objective, just like in the bank, which is pretty cool. Rebecca, yes. Yeah. Um, now, we, oh. There we go. Here we go. All good. <laughs> Need a uh, London branch of the Milton Fitzpatrick DLC. Exactly. Yes. There we go, that was the first token. Uh, she carries one of them. And the butler carries the other one. Which is why we're gonna... There he is. Gonna just... Going that one from him. Yeah. And before that we saw Janini take out uh, the target, Alexa, from <laughs> before even entering the mansion. By a well-timed yeah, uh, chandelier shot. Killing her with a falling object. Excellent kill, of course. And again, a very clean run. Yeah, and at the exit there, there's normally a security guard guarding the exit that he would have taken, but earlier in the run, he placed an explosive duck on the wow. ground. Guys, my game crashed. Oh, no. That's all right. <laughs> Just bring it back up. We'll go to Berlin. <laughs> and time for some uh, nice. donations, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy to step in. Uh, Articate. Donates fifty dollars. Long time donator, first time being read on stream. I'm so excited f to see how you combine speed running with no one left behind. So I had to donate towards that goal. I hope you do the same. Hello to all the lovely people in the cutest chat. Indeed, very cute chat. Uh, Mort Destro donates fifty dollars, saying, "I honestly don't know if I could pick between the Hitman." and Mass Effect as my favorite game series of all time. They're both so great in their own way. Loving the run, Yanini, and let's get more Mass Effect 2. Gorgeous Planet donates $25. In the spirit of supporting MSF, 
please put my money towards saving all of Shepherd Squad. And checking in with that goal, we are just about to crest under 8,000 left to go. Let's get that met. Awesome. That sounds great. But yeah, luckily uh, we're back. It happens. I still have a lot of game crashes. Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. It was very, very unfortunate timing, of course. Next. It doesn't, yeah. But anyway, we're on to Berlin. A very what unique you, map. What are you because doing, man? You have to start at Paris now. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. I just wanted to confuse me. Holy shit. That was. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that was mean of you. Okay. So, it's a very unique map. Um, in, the, in the way that we have 10 ICA agents chasing us, and we only have to take out five of them, but we can choose which one. So, of course, we choose the ones that are most convenient for us. Which, in this case, first we're gonna look out. Then we're gonna start with him. The first one. Agent Green. And what's also unique, uh, is unique about this uh, Berlin map is that the targets will actually fight back. They will shoot you on sight. Yep. Which yeah. is very cool. Very they cool. are all the enforcers. Third. And now we're gonna have the number four. And from this guy, this is the delivery guy. He has uh, the keys to a scooter, which we're gonna steal from him. There we go. This run is just so smooth. It all flows so well. Yep. It's so and then, quick. Uh, the fifth one. Yeah, Berlin is an amazing map because it's so unique. Yeah, very cool map. Very good run. Now, on to Chongqing, which is uh, the, <laughs> our favorite, the favorite map of our Coke uh, of my commentator. It's, it's, it's a somewhat uh, decent map, wouldn't you say, God? I would say. I might be an enthusiast of, of this map. Maybe. We call him the, the Chong King. <laughs> he knows everything about this map. And it's yeah. a very good map. For sure. So, uh, explosive, loud explosive also have the... Uh, yeah, we cannot, I can just run in here. Normally there's a frisk point and I'm not allowed in here. So the guards will stop me. But because of the explosion, uh, it, it kind of overrides that and they will care about the explosion first. And don't care about me, like, they care about me trespassing, but I can just run past them. And they will not try to frisk me or, or stop me from trespassing. Now, we're gonna shoot these drones, and you can gladly explain what their use is when I would hit them. Yeah, so the drones are actually uh, tools of one of the targets, which is Jim Royce, and when you shoot them, she gets alerted that they've been uh, malfunctioning or destroyed, and she will start her path upward. So he's manipulating her, her path and her route so that he can come back later and she'll be in a, a convenient spot for him to kill her. Uh, as opposed to going all the way down in the laboratory to kill her, which would take much more time. Exactly. And now we're at our first target. Hush. You got the down. Okay, exactly. Meanwhile, she's coming up. Which makes it, yeah, a lot more convenient. Yeah, it's only the... After this one, only two maps to go. We're reaching the end of the trilogy. And I think this is the first time where you're using uh, a proxy explosive, actually, instead of a proxy Yeah, table. I think so, yeah. That is very true. Gonna throw that there. And now, she's gonna come and... And, yeah, she's walking in the range of the proximity explosive and it will explode and she will die from it. She has a bodyguard, of course, but it, he's quite far away. When you shoot five drones, uh, the guard walks quite far behind, so Good. she's not going to get seen. If you only shoot one drone, or even four drones, doesn't matter, one to four drones, uh, then the bodyguard will very closely walk behind and it won't work, so you, you have to shoot all five drones for that to work. <clears throat> yeah, now we're on to the last sandbox map. <laughs> and the second last True. mission of the trilogy run. Yeah, and the strat is really, really cool. So, I'm always, always hyped to play it. This beautiful vineyard here. And 
and start off by calming that guy, which makes our, our target to Mary Bedell stop, stop in her tracks. In the time we're gonna use by preparing, preparing some stuff, leaving a sniper here and leaving that briefcase here. The briefcase is also a mechanic. Someone can explain. A briefcase yes. has uh, coin properties. So basically, when any NPC sees a coin, or in this case, a briefcase, they will head towards it and pick it up. And in case of a briefcase, uh, NPCs would also bring it towards a guard. Or if it's a guard, they would bring it towards uh, a weapon box. But in this case, it's the target that sees the briefcase. will head towards there. Uh, Janini planted a remote explosive, a micro one there, that no one sees. Blows up the car and kills Vidal there in an excellent explosion. Exactly. And the, 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 the snipe on, on, on the 8s, it's, it's very tight timed. Like, it's, it's very, very tight timing. Um, so, like, you really need to embrace slowdown and stuff. And it's like, it's going on a 15 degree angle through a window and a door or something. Um, yeah. So, it's, it's quite tight, but it's, it's, it's a really cool Yeah, shot. it's a really cool sniper shot. Such a such a clean run. Also, what was it? A minute, minute of five. Uh, minute seven, yeah. Yeah, really good. On to the last map. <laughs> Romania. Yeah, Romania. The train. It's, as you can see, we have a we have a very long train here. It's not a sandbox map. A typical Hitman sandbox map. It's a, like a story final. Uh, it's also actually the longest one because yeah, because it's quite linear, and. You have to make a way through the tr individual train cars. But yeah, it, it's in, like normally they're, it's quite easy to get through there because there are a lot of free disguises and stuff. But in, in, in two, it can be quite tricky to have to climb around a bit, climb on, climb on the, the train, climb through the train. Yeah, you will see. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a very it's an interesting map, and it's more in the spirit of like traditional speed running, which is more about like you know mechanical mechanical things. Whereas most of, most Hitman maps are about how well you can come up with an idea and make it work in a in a quick manner. Whereas this one is really uh, it's very very mechanically focused. Most people are going to be doing the same thing on this map, but just doing it faster than each other. Exactly. There are but, often stuff to save time and to get through individual. Uh, train cars quicker, but it's always like here, especially it's a it's a decision of risk versus reward. Yeah, it always has a few scary moments, and it being the last map out of twenty, uh, you yeah. really want to avoid those as much as possible in the trilogy run. Exactly. Also, because it's just the, the the longest map time wise, it's actually kind of funny because it's it's like a linear le level. But you have to get all the way to the back of the train to use the sound and instinct there to kill uh, the last target. And even if somehow you would find a way to kill him from a distance, it still wouldn't do you any good but this, because there's still only one exit there. So there we go. It's always a bit tight, but uh, it's totally fine. They turn around and I can sneak through here. Yeah, that, that's, the the that's one of the scariest one. moments for me on uh, Romania yeah. when I get there. It is. That screwdriver throw. But now we're pretty good. We're coming into the office area, which where we can't really climb around. We have to go straight through the train. And like, there's a suit here, which has no enforcer, so we can just could normally just go straight, straight through. But of course, we're doing suit only, so we can't do that. Yeah, that would count as a disguise, and so he would lose his suit only, only status of the run. Exactly. So, we're gonna pick a this guy and, and use a mechanic, like, I dropped a grenade there, and he's gonna see the grenade, and it's like, oh, someone left the weapon lying around, and he's gonna take care of it and carry it away, so we can sneak past him. And now, those are civilians, so we just panic them with some shots, and they don't enforce us, and now it's true! We don't have anything to fail anymore, this is it, this is the last, uh, there's a target, also Edwards. And you're gonna pick up a syringe, stab him with it, and that's time. Very, very nicely done. Great run, uh, Janini. Very proud of you. You did great, man. <laughs> very impressive. Uh, 
Oh yeah, thank thank you guys so much for for commentating with me. And uh, I'm I'm really sorry about about my nerves and about the struggles early on, especially. But I hope it was very enjoyable, and I could uh, interest some of you in, in in Hitman. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed the run as much as I did, I did playing it. Yeah, you did absolutely amazing, man. You regained your composure uh, really, really well after a rough start on uh, Paris and Sapienza. But after that, you played really, really, really well. Like outstanding performance, man. I'm very proud of you. And thanks for having us Thank as you. uh, your commentators. Absolutely. Of Thank course. You. Of course. And yeah, thanks for GDQ for having me. It was, it was a huge, huge honor. And um, yeah, sorry for my nerves, but that's the way it is. And... Yeah, have a have a great GDQ everyone. Well, that was a phenomenal run from Yanini. Absolutely a masterclass in how you get a handle on your nerves and come out swinging. Now, let's go to a quick ad break. And we'll be right back as we get ready for an interview with Blazin ahead of the Ghost Runner run. Let's not waste a moment of our time. Let's get right into that interview. Take it away, Kizaron. What's up, SGDQ 2021 Online? It's Kizaron here, and I'm joined by the runner of Mass Effect 2, Mike Wave. Mike, 
How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Uh, trying to stay as calm as possible, you know? But yep, I, yep, yep. Fun. Yeah. So you're doing any percent new game plus with DLC, which is kind of a mouthful for me to say out loud. But uh, yeah. can we kind of just go into it real quick? What what makes this run different compared to just starting up a fresh file and just going at it any percent? Um, so in New Game Plus, uh, we start with a character who is partially leveled, not max leveled uh, because of the enemy scaling in the game, but that's a whole better story. But, you know, we just start with uh, some abilities leveled up, uh, some weapons unlocked, and some armor, but that's it. Like, we, there's actually a lot in the game we don't start with because the game... Uh, does not transfer some certain upgrades to a new game plus file. So it's actually kind of similar. It's more similar to a new game uh, run compared to some other games where new game plus is just, you know, infinite rocket launcher and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I was actually going to ask you this question, but we do have some social media already. And I'll let social media take over for a couple minutes here. But we have from at Shawnee7188 asking, what's your favorite strat and tech in the run? Uh, so most of the tech in the game is going to revolve around a glitch called the elevation glitch, or we just call it an elevator. And, uh, it's by far the most fun glitch in the game. It's basically, we go around and strafe against walls and try and find places where the game will just shoot us up into the sky where, uh, you know, we can just potentially find you out of bounds and skips. <laughs> it's, a uh, it's, it's actually a lot of fun to, uh, just goof around with that piece of tech. And it's a lot of fun to do in the run as well. And just to kind of pivot a little bit, cause he did mention skips. Uh, we were actually talking about this before the interview started, but yeah. uh, the Mass Effect 2 community apparently has recently found a lot of new skips in the past few months. You want to kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, the more and more we lab the game, the more and more like we find that there are so many skips you could do in the game, and it helps that the game doesn't have that many triggers that you need to hit. So you could potentially, for some levels, just like skip straight to the end, you know, which just makes the game so much faster. And... The fact that you can make saves wherever allows you to break certain uh, parts mm -hmm. of the game as well to skip some stuff. There, there's just so much stuff we keep finding. There's new ways to optimize uh, fights and boss fights to just do everything faster. Uh, new ways of doing old skips that are faster. All that jazz, you know? Yeah, not, not to put any additional pressure onto you, yeah. but uh, you did mention that because of these skips, the estimate is actually a little more generous than you would probably submit now. So for folks at <laughs> yeah. home, that's actually going to give Micah a few opportunities to go for some really hard tricks that yeah. might normally not be done in a marathon setting because we kind of have that wiggle room to play with. Yeah. Uh, um, they're not, yeah, I, I, they're, they're pretty tough, but thanks mm -hmm. to the, the fact that we can make saves in most places, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, so we can just like, you know, go ahead, goof around and try, uh, you know, a more risky strat. That might or, may or may not more like cost us time or save us time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Now going back to some social media again, we have from at I'm Sniper Killer saying, "What's the hardest thing about this run?" Uh, the hardest thing. There are some skips about halfway into the run that are pretty tough. Uh, you need to do them like perfectly, or else you will deload a certain part of the game and just fall into the void. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, and that costs a lot of time. Uh, there are some fights that are pretty difficult. Uh, some fights have become trivial because of a, another bug that we found that we'll get into when we do the run. Uh, but there are some fights still, especially towards the end when the, the, the enemies get tougher due to that like level scaling that I, I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, where even though we're playing the game on the easiest difficulty, uh, the game is a cover shooter at heart, which means if you're not in cover, you take a lot of damage, even on casual. You will take not a true. lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, so... Because uh, we don't want to take cover because that's slow and we want to be running mm -hmm. around, that means we could potentially die at some parts. Uh, so, yeah. Um, there is, yeah, the middle point of the run, I want to say, is like probably the hardest part of the game. Which, speaking of the middle point, you were mentioning yeah. earlier, that's kind of around the point in time where we figure out whether it's actually any percent or yeah. no one left behind. So, folks at home, if you want no one left behind, don't forget to go to gamesunquick.com and donate towards that incentive. Now, let's, let's end this interview on a little bit of a lighter note here. Uh, I know that you mentioned that uh, this was more in Mass Effect 1 than Mass Effect 2, but we have one last question from at Dijon Ketchup 13. Every time I see your name, Dijon, it, it makes me laugh. But what is the most ridiculous thing you've seen the AI do during a run? And I'm going to edit that to uh, during any of your Mass Effect runs. Uh, so in Mass Effect 1, I, I, which I also run, uh, it is possible in some boss fights, like the Venezia boss fight, where... The the AI could just become Terminators. They're normally useless, but sometimes they are like insane and just like wipe out every single enemy in the room. 
And that includes Caden, who we normally bring, and he can sometimes just end up killing the boss in that segment, like just instantly, like at the beginning of the boss fight, which <laughs> is still insane to me whenever it happens. But yeah, <laughs> well, that's normally thanks. supposed to be a really tough fight. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot for taking some time uh, for this interview. That's Mike, everyone. Yeah. I'm Keezeron. Mike's going to be doing Mass Effect 2 really soon. But coming up next, we have Ghost Runner. And I'm going to throw it back up to Nerdy. So take care, everyone. Thank you so much, Keezeron. And like Keez was saying, if you folks want to see that no one left behind incentive, let's get it met now. Uh, you do not want to miss this. Uh, right now, we are sitting at just under four and a half thousand left to go. And that is in no small part uh, thanks to this donation from Klondike 7 who donated $1,000 and says, Mass Effect was my best friend's favorite game. This donation is in his honor. He passed earlier this year due to COVID. He got me into gaming and MSF is doing great work to prevent his tra tragedy from being repeated. Go GDQ. Absolutely, 100%. Alrighty, and I am now getting the word that we are ready to go with Blayton and his run of Ghost Runner. Take it away, Blayton. <laughs> 